Take your camera. My girl, will you get up from my face? Will you get up from my face? Take your camera. My girl, will you get up from my face? Will you get up from my face? Will you stop that nonsense? I really do not understand why this guy is running. What is your problem? Are you are you are you that stupid? You are in courts of all places to run. Courts. And then they've sentenced you to death. And then what do you think the security guards are going to do? Oh, he's running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can go on. You can go on, run. I don't understand. There are certain people that have been positioned to, you know, make sure that you go to a full court and then you're Why is there something wrong with People are stupid though. People are really, really very stupid. But then, so people do not even know what is currently going on. And then they are like, ah, who is this guy? What did they do? If you are one of those persons that I will say that, ah, chairman, you need to watch news because at this point, you are supposed to know what is currently going on in Nigeria. Especially the fact that we have Twitter, Facebook. Information like this are things that you are always supposed to have at your fingertips so that you will be abreast with the things to do where to go how to act what to do because this girl is just a victim of you know not being at the right place at the right time she was looking for a job and then she saw something on twitter like an advert and then she decided to dm the person that oh there's job placement and then she went there boom and then you know this whole thing happened so you know if you are somebody who doesn't take information like this very seriously i just pray that you will not end up like this because you need to be abreast with certain news and information but for those people who do not know what we are talking about don't worry you are forgiving for your past sins but from now henceforth make sure that you watch the videos of true crime daniel i mean that guy is excellent in the way he analyzes crime and on today's episode of crime watch with dear Daniels, we are going to be talking about you know what uduak frank akman did to umore you know the job seeker so to say and you know i was looking for the best way by which i can say this thing and it is going to be very interesting captivating as well as you know my ability to give all the legal analysis that i want to give and then true crime daniel that guy that guy is just wonderful he basically broke everything down do you understand so let me give you like some sort of some sort of introduction of what we are talking about I hope you guys still remember this story because there is a major update on it frank appan the confessed killer of 26 years old in the is now back paddling on his initial claim on the 6th of april 2022 while he was in court he came forward to give his final statement now remember that he is the one representing himself in court and also remember at the initial time when the charges was read to him last year in 2021 he pled guilty to the killing of 26 years old in Ihumore. however just last week on the 6th of april right in front of the judge and in the presence of everyone including the young girl's family this young man claimed that he does not know who in Ihumore is he said with his own mouth that he does not know who this girl is, that he has never seen her before and that he has never sexually assaulted anyone nor has he killed anyone. And when they reminded him that he pled guilty when the charges was read to him, he claimed that the only reason he said he was guilty at the time was because he had a fever. And he maintained his claim that he does not know who this girl is and he has never seen her before. Now, it's unclear what this means for the entire case. But I'm having a feeling he's trying to take us back. He's trying to get away with it. He's trying to fight it in court. And he doesn't plan to suffer the consequences of his actions. Which may also mean that probably someone is behind him. Even though he is representing himself in court, it is very clear right now that someone is backing him up and telling him what to say in court in order to avoid suffering for killing this girl. Okay, now, so right now, we have not really gotten into the details. We just, you know, have a little bit of glimpse. This is what is a glimpse. You understand? So we don't have the details yet. But part of the glimpse is telling us that one of the very stupid things that this guy did is that he represented himself in court. We don't know what he did yet. We don't know. I mean, I'm talking to those people who do not have this information. That's one of the first 
you know, very big mistake you can never do. Represent yourself in court. So, we that we went to school to study law for seven years, our dads now, you will just come and say, no, in a criminal case of murder and rape, you represented yourself. Ah! I want to see your geniusness. I want to see how you will do it. And it's your more evidence act. It's your more criminal law. How do you want to argue? What do you know that they call cross examination, re examination? You know, hostile witness. But book in here, what do you what do you do? Are you represent? Okay. Okay, it's fine. We will leave you. Represent. Do your thing. Let us see what you are going to do. Now, not only did he represent himself in court, this idiot, permit me to say, first of all, he pleaded guilty when the whole thing came and he was brought before the court he pleaded guilty to killing her although he didn't plead guilty to the rape aspect which we are still going to analyze in the course of this whole video he pleaded guilty to killing her and then all of a sudden we didn't try out because one of the things about the administration of criminal justice in nigeria is that when a person pleads guilty the court will still enter a not guilty plea on behalf of the person regardless of the fact that the person pleaded guilty one of the reasons is because it is murder if you are brought to court for murder case what they are going to do is they're going to kill you they sentence you to death so for somebody who just comes and says he's guilty it might not understand the nitty-gritty of what he has said so the court will still give you the benefit of the doubt regardless of the fact that you have pleaded guilty the court will still say you know what do your thing still open a defense for yourself let us see let me look at the facts let the prosecution prove the case so regardless of the fact that in the beginning you should know that in the beginning the court could have said bah, 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 you are guilty go and die but the court said okay you said you are guilty abby no problem calm down let us still give you a not guilty plea and then the court entered the not guilty plea for him and then the idiots that said he was guilty now changed his mouth and said he was not guilty and in my head i'm like uh okay what's what's going on here you just said you were guilty at the beginning of the trial now mid trial you are saying that you're not guilty okay this is even more interesting and more fascinating you are not guilty abby more they watch then the same person who said that he was guilty who also said that he did not need any other lawyer or maybe he couldn't afford a lawyer but even if he couldn't afford the lawyer then you can tell the court that you don't have a lawyer the court will write to the ministry of uh, justice under the office of the public defender to give you a free lawyer so now you are saying that okay you are you are not guilty along the line and you are saying that you want to represent yourself and now one of the things that he said someone who said that he was guilty one of the things that he said is that for the first time that he saw the picture when he was arguing his not guilty plea he for the first time that he saw the picture was when he was in cell that he has never seen this girl in his life and in my mind and like yeah you've not seen this girl in your life you saw her for the first time in the picture and then you entered the court and pleaded guilty and then your reason for pleading guilty according to him is that he had a fever ah oh jesus the devil is taking note i'm very sure the devil is like wow wow my son you are doing well <laughs> but you know this case is even more interesting the analysis is more interesting and very complicated which is the reason that i will tell you to wait to the end of this video because trust me you have a lot of things to learn you know i'm very sure as at this stage of the video you've already learned a lot already but still you have so much things to learn in the course of this video but before we go into the crux of the video this is olayeni dear Colonel daniels popularly known as Deco specter and welcome to another episode of crime watch with Deco daniels where i discuss about different things that are happening in nigeria i have a lot of videos in relation to crime watch and other things where i talk about law you are going to find those videos either you know in the description box or at the end of the video make sure you stick around to watch those videos and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure that you like this video the high amount of likes i receive on the video youtube is going to recommend the video to more people so please make sure that you like the video and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell also don't forget to follow me on instagram at dearcore underscore daniels and on linkedin at dearcolola 
Daniels. And this is the time where we move into the crux of the video. Now we are beginning to uh, enjoy the video. We want to know the first thing first is what exactly happened. How did this Umore girl, you know, the Uni Uyo graduate, how did she get in contact with this Uduak Frank boy? Like these are two different people who did not know each other. How did they meet each other? And you know, what was the connection and all that? I already told you that she was looking for a job when I started the video, but still, what was the connection and all those kind of things? And let's go in for further details. Now, for those of you who don't remember the story or who don't know the story, don't worry, I got you. On the 27th of April 2021, 26-year-old Inihumore posted on her Twitter page that she needed a job around Uyo where she lives. A few hours after she tweeted this, 20-year-old Ezekiel, who also goes by the name of Udwak Frank Akpan, saw the tweet and replied her saying that he has something for her, a secretarial position at a construction company. This is a tweet exchange here. After Hini saw his response, they both exchanged numbers in the private messages. He also gave her an address to where she would come for the job interview. On the 29th of April would be the last time anyone would see her alive. That day, it was said that she woke up excited and dressed up getting ready for her job interview. Towards afternoon, she headed for the location where she was supposed to do the interview. Somehow, as she was going to the location, which was said to be a little far from her house, it was said that Frank called her to quickly change the location but still around that area he had initially told her before but a different street or should I say a different gate number from the initial one he had sent her it was at this point she knew something was sort of off she reached out to her close friend happiness letting her know of the situation and even giving her the phone number of the person she was going to see for the job interview which was Ezekiel's number barely an hour after Hini has given her friend the phone number the friend got a distress call from Hini and in the call she heard Hini crying and screaming and the call instantly went off. Soon afterwards, she got a voice note from WhatsApp and it was also of Ini screaming in the voice note. That was when the friend quickly reached out to her family and forwarded the family every details that Ini had sent to her and also told Ini family that she is in danger. Now, the friend was not in Uyo at the time. She was in Lagos also looking for a way, equally looking for a job. And that was why all she could do was send a message to her family. She also went on Twitter to alert the users regarding her friend's situation. That was how Ine Umoren went from a job seeker to a missing person. Now, her family reached out to the police, but the police were slow about it. They went to the police station, but the police told them that they could not do anything that day because it was late. And they also said that she's not technically a missing person until 24 hours or was it 48 hours is complete. What is painful about this was that Ine was not just any missing person. She really put out a distress call and a distress voice note. And the police knowing about that and still waiting till the next day to act is something that is still very flawed and it's something that I would forever blame the police for because I feel if they had acted earlier enough, she might have still been alive. There were also accusations from the girl's family that the police requested money from them to buy fuel for their vehicle to go and look for her. Although the commissioner of police claimed that the report came to them on the 28th, the family, however, reported her situation on the 27th, the same day she went for that job interview, barely an hour after her friend has informed her family of the distress call she got from Ini, crying and wailing in pain. So it was obvious that something was going wrong where she was, but the Uyo State Police did not respond immediately. Also put in mind that the police had all the details they needed. They had the address she had gone to. They had the boy's phone number. What more would they have needed to look for this girl? Now between You see this part? You see you see what the police did here? It did not only exasperate my body. It exasperated my entire existence. Hey Jesus, I was born in anger. I, you know, police will never will never disappoint you. You know, you know when when you know an entity is so useless but in this case it is so useless that at least you will say at least they should still be able to do something but they will still say ah you okay you still have hope in us wow you really believe in us because i mean the parents found out that something was wrong with their daughter and where in okay in a same society where should i run to I should run to the police station and you guess what the police is telling me it's telling me that it's, a, it's not a case of missing person yet until it's 24 hours or 48 hours <sighs> okay wait this is not a case of missing person this is a case of a person in distress there are two different things missing person is oh she went out and she's not yet back we don't know where she is we don't know if she went to someone's house or 
there's a difference between that and you saw there is address of where she went to you saw there is number of the person to call and also you heard the voice notes what else do you need to understand that this is not a case of missing person but a case of somebody who is in danger and this is something that you are supposed to act as urgently as possible and not to say that until the next day if it were your daughter that's the question those policemen at the counter if one of their colleagues daughter was in distress what would they have done because the non talent attitude i do not understand and then to top it all off well, uh, madam you go buy fuel for us ah police 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 we cannot say for sure whether or not if they had gotten there on that exact day that that girl would have still been alive we can't say for sure but at least the tendency of her still being alive is there if they had acted fast and then they acted the next day i mean i mean i mean just just calm down just, just let's continue watching you know Moren was a missing person she was trending on Twitter with the hashtag find in humore. On the 28th, the police bursted into the compound of Frank Udwak, the guy who had called Ini for the job, this guy. But on getting to the compound, they could not find Frank, nor could they find Ini humore. But they found his father and they took him into custody. Just within this time, Twitter had already done their job in finding and identifying Udwak Akman. At the initial time, they did not know who he was or what he looked like. But after his phone number circulated and details of his address also went viral, people recognized the guy that had most likely held him in captivity to be this Udwak Akman, Ezekiel Frank. He has a lot of names. And people called him out. Tweets and posts were directed at him, in which he also responded from the comfort of his home, claiming that yes, she was supposed to come and see him for a job, but she never got to the place he asked her to come. He pretty much claimed that Ine Umaren didn't show up to his house, trying to divert attention, claiming that she must have gone somewhere else. This was a post he made, denying that he never set eyes on Ine Umaren. The only problem was no one believed him. In fact, he got instant backlash. With the intense backlash, it was said he deactivated his Twitter account and also deactivated his Facebook, which eventually added to the suspicion that he was lying and he indeed knew where Ine Umoren was. Now at this point, we still did not know that she was already dead. We were still hoping that she would be found alive. Soon afterwards, the police announced that they had gone to Udwak's compound, that is Frank Udwak's compound, to look for Ine Umoren. But they also announced that they did not find the boy, nor did they find the girl. However, they found the father of the boy, whom they took to custody. It was at this point that people figured out that the boy had run away. But what they could not understand is why didn't the police find this girl? Is it that the boy ran away with the girl? After his father was arrested, the search for him began. And the possibility that she was still alive reduced its Now, chance. let's take a pause a little bit. This video is supposed to teach you a lot of things, you know, when it comes to the right and wrong in relation to, you know, the law. Do you understand? Now, when the police is looking for a suspect and they get to the suspect's house and then they see the parent of the suspect or they see the siblings of the suspect, it is illegal, you know, it is illegal for you to arrest the parent of the suspect when you are looking for the suspect in himself it is called arrest in lieu arrest in lieu arrest in lieu is very illegal however in this case their arrest of the father is justified why is it justified because they got into the house they do not even number one know who they are looking for and number two they do not know if the person acted alone or if the person acted in you know conspiracy with others so in this case Conspiracy is a crime. If two or three people agree to, you know, carry out a, an offense, those two or three people have killed somebody. All of them, three of them, they are guilty of conspiracy to kill as well as killing. Do you understand that? So in this case, the first thing that came to my head is, oh, okay, I think arresting the father is an illegal thing. But then I remembered that, oh, if you are arresting the father, because there is no evidence yet that can prove that the father has nothing to do with the death, you can arrest the father based on conspiracy. But if there is clear evidence, for example, that the father was not even in Nigeria, as at the time that thing happened, and he just got back, immediately he was getting back was when they were arresting him. Hey, hey, you can see that they cannot arrest him because there is no, you know, evidence of conspiracy. That's one thing that you need to learn. When police wants to come and arrest somebody, the police cannot arrest somebody they are looking for someone else. Except there is no evidence that can show that that person has not acted in conspiracy with the other person. If no, if there is no evidence, then the police can arrest, then question, then ask, okay, it'd be like say this one, no, no, anything. Oh yeah, release. 
Do you understand? But if they arrest and begin to question you and it can't be like, say, they can now detain you. Do you understand? Now, that is one part of the thing you need to learn. Another part is what Idiomore did. As sad as it is that she died, I think that is one very beautiful thing that we can learn from what she did. When she started having some suspicious moves, that, ah, ah, but this guy tell me, say, my, I come this place. He can't they change him now. Say, Mike, I come this place. Ah, it be like, say, something day. She didn't keep it to herself. She texted her friends. You know, one of the reasons, you know, I, she might not have texted her parents is because we know parents. Parents are usually hyper. Small thing, hey, yeah, yeah, come back home. It could have been legit and maybe a sincere mistake. I say, hey, come back home, come back home, and stuff like that. So, she did the right thing, actually, for texting her friend. Do you understand? Which is one thing that we should learn. If you are going to somewhere that is very unknown and you are going alone, let somebody know where you are going. It need not be your parents, but at least somebody that you can attest that when something is wrong, she will act fast. Because when she sent the VN, she sent the address, she sent everything, the girl immediately forwarded it to her parents. And the girl was in Lagos. There was nothing she could have done. Nothing. She was in Lagos. In short, if she started traveling that, that to you that day, she would not have gotten that day. Or even if she had gotten very late in the night. And then the parents acted almost just one hour from when they were hearing the voice to the enter the police station. Bam. Police called the Temi rubbish. Say, uh, he's not missing. Ah. But let's continue the video. After his father was arrested, the search for him began and the possibility that she was still alive reduced its chances. So after a few days of running, he eventually handed himself over to the police. This was after he had learned that his frail father has been arrested and also accused in playing a role in the disappearance of this young girl. So after Hudrak turned himself in, he then took the police back to his father's compound where he showed them the shallow grave he had buried 26 years old in Ihumore. The grave was dug and her body was recovered. It was at this point the whole world knew that Ine Umoren was dead. The 26 years old job seeker who was just looking for a way to make ends meet met her end in the hands of this young man. So after making his confession and revealing to the police where he buried the girl's body, it was now time to answer why and how he killed her. <laughs> you see where this boy is very very stupid. You see this thing? This is what even made me know that this boy is not totally stupid, he's daft, he's unintelligent, he's is is everything in the negative everything you they talk say you they plead not guilty you remember Abi, when he said he was pleading not guilty he first pleaded guilty not changing that he pleaded not guilty that the first time that he saw the girl was when they showed him the picture wait wait but what is currently going on don't be the same boy when he was one that turned himself to the police because he heard that they've arrested his father you enter the police, you go tell police, say, okay, oh, he did my house. You can't go dig him. Now you show the police where she did. Wait, you can't go dig him out. The police, you know, carry the body, go. You now said later that the first time you were seeing her was. <laughs> This boy is stupid. Let us let us just stop there and continue. We are still going to talk more, but at this point, let's just stop. He claimed he did it by himself and that no one helped him. And that the reason he did it was because he wanted to be sexual with her, but she fought him back in the middle of them doing it. And then just as they were fighting, he hit her head with a stabilizer. I mean, he was basically claiming that they were fighting and that he was only defending himself. That was his claim. But the thing is, not many people believed him. I don't think anyone even believed him. So now it was said an autopsy was carried out to determine the cause of her death. And during the autopsy, it was also confirmed that she was sexually assaulted. When confronted with the assault and rape claims, he did not exactly deny it. He admitted to doing something with her. However, he claimed that she agreed to it, which kind of means that it wasn't exactly rape according to his claims. And even though many people did not believe him, his story was that they both agreed to do it. That is after he has revealed to Hini that there was no job. He admitted that he revealed to Hini that there was no job, that this old job interview was fake, and that the reason he brought her to his house was so that they could do something together, which he claimed she agreed to. 
It's still hard to believe that you would call someone for job interview and eventually tell the person that it's not a job interview that you just want to have your way with them. Then tell the whole world that the person agreed to willingly have something with you. Those were his claims. He added that when they were doing it, she started attacking him and started hitting him in which he fought back and hit her head with a stabilizer that eventually killed her. He said he was scared and he eventually went to bury her body in a shallow grave. That was his story. When he was arraigned in court for the first time, he pled guilty. He pled guilty to causing her death, but I think if I remember correctly, he did not plead guilty to sexually assaulting her. It was also stated that he was the one representing himself in court, that he did not have any lawyers because he could not afford them. That now, let's take another pause, just for a minute. Now, he's saying, according to him, he's saying that he did not rape her. Don't forget that initially, I told you that he pleaded guilty to murder, but he did not plead guilty to um, rape. He said, according to him, that it was consensual. Now, what um, Daniel is saying is that it is unlikely, which is correct, it's unlikely that you deceive person come your house you deceive the person to come to your house you know false pretense that you know there is job and then when the person gets to your house you then tell the person you want to have sex with the person and the person would agree daniel has said that is unlikely and i agree however the fact that is unlikely does not mean that it is impossible do you understand that i'm a very logical person so it is actually quite possible i mean permit me it's quite very possible if you look at it you know commonsensically the girl can agree however share this boy you see why he, he good me you are a god carry lawyer and they tell you now say more get lawyer more than get lawyer and i don't agree how will you say that okay she agreed at the beginning and then during the course of the sexual intercourse there was a point because according to him if she agreed and then she started struggling it means that struggling means stop abby and it was because she did not stop struggling that he hit her with the stabilizer Abi, that's the logical thing now. But what he did not know, what they did not tell him, the law they did not teach him, all these things that they are teaching him, what they did not teach him is during sexual intercourse, when anybody says no, either the man or the woman, where anybody says no, and the other party continues regardless from that point, the one before that point might not be rape, but the one after that point is definitely rape. So the way he was saying it with so much infantry, like, oh, she agreed, she agreed. And then along the line, she then, uh, uh, so along the line, she, you raped her now. So why are you pleading not guilty? Since you are pleading guilty for murder, I could go plead guilty for rape. Do you understand what I'm saying? If a person withdraws consent along the line, if a person withdraws consent, that point where that consent has been withdrawn. And in fact, consent need not be withdrawn with violence. She need not even struggle. All she just needs to say is, I no do. In short, no is enough. No is enough. Regardless of the fact that she even shakes her body. Let us say that she did not even shake her body and she kept on saying no, you know, and showing that she did not want it. It didn't reflect in the body, but it reflected in the mouth and reflected in the intention. It is still rape. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is still rape. So not only did she say no with her mouth, let us say, I am not saying that, you know, he raped her with no rape her. The one that came before was consensual or not consensual. I am saying based on his own words, we do not know what happened because the other person to tell us the other side of the story is currently dead. May I so rest in peace. But what I am telling you now is we do not know what happened. But let us even share what he has to say. What he said is even incriminating in itself. It's not exonerating. So what he's saying is, mm, she gave me consent, no problem. But there was a point where he is admitting that she withdrew consent and she started to struggle. And I told you that struggle is not even an element to withdrawing consent. No is enough. Not only did she say no, she now struggled. You now said that you have 50 heads. Because she was struggling, you now carry stabilizer and hit her head. And now you confess this confessor. That was what he said initially when he was pleading guilty. But because I told you, according to the procedure of the court, when someone pleads guilty, maybe because the person does not know the you know essence of what he was saying, you know, the court will still enter a not guilty plea for the person and all those kind of things. And this is where we are right now. So, you know, I just want you to see when I was calling him idiot and say this person is daft and unintelligent. I hope you are beginning to see how daft he is. But let's continue with the video. You know, we are almost at the end. It was also stated that he was the one representing himself in court that he did not have any lawyers because he could not afford them.
that is basically where we ended with this story at the initial time i guess he had been subsequently going to court and they have been talking about the matter in court quietly it just so happened that on the 6th of april almost one year since the incident occurred he denied ever knowing this girl or ever seeing her he is now saying that he has never met her before and he has never seen her and that he does not know what the court case is about he claimed that the first time he ever saw her was when they showed him her picture in prison now we don't know what that means for the case we don't know if he is trying to take us back we don't know what his plans are well uh, apparently it is not clear the court that sentenced him to death he was obvious i mean he was clear to the blind and he was audible to the deaf that he was going to die you see see what you don't understand is judges are not idiots even in short let us not even say narrate this thing you don't need to study law narrate this thing to somebody that studied you know let's say botany or fishery you know go still make sense to the person you know go still make sense to the person so let me even teach you a little bit of logicality and something that has to do with this one of the reasons why the court sentenced him to death hmm, is because there was a confessional statement one of the grounds for expunging a confessional statement is when it is made under duress or force not when it is made when you are sick. He said he had fever. That was when he was giving those confessions and all that. It's not a ground. You can only make inadmissible. Making inadmissible means that that confessional statement cannot be tendered in court and it will be admitted because it was made where there is violence or threat of violence, where there is force, where there is threat. You know, all those kind of maybe you were, were, were you take it to the police station and then they carry the iron and then they want to press it on your back. Ah, my dear, if it's me, anything where he talks about, I say I go sign up. But the fact that I've signed it, you know, doesn't mean that it is admissible in court. He doesn't know that. So he was giving grounds for his confessional statement to be inadmissible based on fever. <sighs> you see you see you see this is the reason i'm saying that you don't just enter the court and say that you want to defend yourself you know nothing about law you can't defend yourself which is one of another lesson which i would like you to know when police arrest you please and please ladies and gentlemen don't sign anything don't say anything don't do anything if a policeman arrests you from the point of arrest text your lawyer I am saying this because you know there are some innocent people this one is clearly guilty apparently but there are some innocent people who would then implicate themselves just like this one has implicated himself through what they say and what they do the moment you are leaving your house text your lawyer hello or blah 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 or your family members or this when you get to the police station if they say write statement don't write statements let them detain you because in that statement that you are writing that you think you are writing you might not have done it but the way you will write it will be as if you have done it do you understand what I'm saying? You don't. You need a lawyer. A lawyer has to tell you these are the things you write. Admit to this. Don't admit to this. Say you were here. Don't say you were here. It is not lying. It is the truth. But the truth is such a way that you don't get implicated. You know, a person can tell you the truth and still you are still going to find fault with what that person is saying. So when you are going to the police station, I hope you are opening your ear to ear. When you are going to the police station and you know that you are going to be detained or arrested, make sure that you call somebody who is knowledgeable about the law to tell you what to do and what not to do don't open your mouth to talk to any policeman because in actual fact police is not your friend police want to go higher in rank and it is based on the number of criminals and all that that they are able to put away that they are going to promote them so they will use you to do promotion but that is the truth you know some of them will not all of them will. some policemen are diligent some of them are bribe seeking and all that and not diligent so don't let non-diligent policemen use you to do promotion now in the case of the father another lesson that we need to learn when the father was arrested i told you that you know there was you know a, a tendency of conspiracy right when the father was arrested the father was charged to court for what is known as accessory after the fact accessory after the fact now also not just his father his sister as well they were both charged for accessory after the fact and then people were like no they should have convicted them and all that and i'm like calm down you know no law chill make person with no law explain that to you you would not go just go you know all these news sites if you are reading the comments you will look ah, oh they learn no bagger what you did not know some said that the, the father and the sister has bribed the judge ah, what is wrong with people in this country? You just open your mouth. What you did not know, you say they did. You know, one of the reasons why the father and the sister, they were not sentenced is because 
of the fact that there was lack of evidence. But before we even get to lack of evidence, the question is, what is accessory after the fact? And how is the words accessory after the fact a crime? What accessory after the fact is, is that when somebody has committed a crime, and you assist the person in any way to get away with the crime, you'll be charged with what is known as accessory after the fact. Do you understand? So, this is one of the reasons why they tell you that you should not keep bad company. They are not saying you should not keep bad company because you'll be influenced. Some people cannot be influenced. But they are saying that when that bad company go and do something outside, let's say the bad company steals a phone and then it comes to your house and then it drops the phone in your house. And then, you know, people are coming to your house and say, ah, this is, in your mind, you're like, he didn't do anything wrong. Now, you want to defend him. That act of defending, even when you did not know that he has stolen the phone, might make you become an accessory after the fact. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know when a diligent person, somebody who doesn't steal, doesn't do, comes to realize people are saying he's stole. You can beat your chest and say this boy, steal, when, how? It's not possible. Do you understand? But when you not go and do that kind of thing for bad company, and then they don't find the phone, they are going to arrest you because you are somewhat an accessory trying to prevent the arrest of that person. Do you understand? If you take overt act, your act must be overt in such that you are preventing that person from being arrested or that person from being, you know, captured or the thing which the person has stolen or done from being taken. Then you can be charged as an accessory. So in this case, they are saying that the father and the sister shielded the boy because when he ran away, he must have gotten to, you know, one of the places and they made the arrest, you know, hard and all that. But the courts acquitted them he didn't convict them because there was lack of evidence for the charge of accessory after the fact they did not bribe the judge fellow nigerian small team bribe small team they, ah, ah, calm down they didn't bribe the judge if there is lack of evidence the judge cannot convict unless there is evidence so now on the reason why this our mugu oswo was was convicted is because now First of all, there was a confessional statement where he himself confessed. The court did not convict based on sentiment or the fact that he is likely to have. These are the reasons why the court convicted. There is something known as the last sin principle. It's very, very potent. You see that last sin principle? Extremely potent. It's in the Evidence Act. Now, that last sin principle says that when a person is last seen with another person, that another person must give an explanation as to the whereabouts of that person or in the absence of an explanation as to how that person died do you understand when i'm talking about in the absence of an explanation that means that oh you cannot tell us what has happened to the person here eh? or you tell us how the person died do you understand so for example i have this friend a lawyer who is currently defending another person murder case the person is a student of a school i don't want to call the school call the lawyer or anything he's currently a student of a school and then you know there was a house he was in his house and then a girl came to sleep over in the house now this girl apparently was sick before but did not let him know during the sleepover in the night in the middle of the night the girl started woke up and started vomiting and then the boy was panicking that ah, i don't know this, this before morning come get on die you cannot explain what has happened because you're not a medical practitioner but at least you can give us you know some sort of details kilo shele okay what did she eat what did she this what did she that do you understand in that case that boy will be arrested and be charged to court but where there is a reasonable explanation as to the death of the girl, nothing will be wrong with the boy. They will discharge and acquit the boy. If there is autopsy that can show us that, oh, you sure you get, these are the things that happened to the girl, then you will discharge the boy. But in this case, we are telling Frank to give us a reasonable explanation of what happened to the girl. First of all, the reason we are telling Frank, Frank was the one whose address the girl sent to her friend. Frank was the one whose phone number the girl sent to her friend. That already tied Frank to the crime. But not just that. Frank was also the person who answered a job vacancy, blah, blah, blah. Where there was no job in the first place. Which shows that there is, there is like this, like this, like this in this story. There was no job. So, now, we have three things tying this case to Frank. This uh, Uduak guy. That is not even the issue. The now big, 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 terrible issue is not the fact that you are the one 
that took the police to the crime scene where they carried the chicken. That one is even the the head of all of all of all issues. <laughs> you, you do understand the 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 big one. So if you know where the girl is buried, can you explain to us how the girl got buried, or how you knew that the girl got buried? Do you understand? That means you have to point to somebody. Oh, this is the person that will bury the girl. He didn't point to anybody. Do you understand? And then in your own statement, wait till you, you use your own mouth talk. You said you hit the girl with stabilizer. And when you are talking about things like that, I think what he was trying to come under was under the defense of self-defense. He was trying to come under self-defense. But self-defense only happens when you are in imminent danger. You, you are the one in imminent danger. You can use anything reasonable around you to defend yourself against that imminent danger. In this case, it's the girl that is in imminent danger now. Are you in imminent danger? If you stand up, the girl for wrong come out now. Do you understand what I'm saying? If the girl is being violent with you, that's because you are the one that put her in imminent danger. If you had stood up, I'm very sure that he had stood up and not restrained the girl. The girl would have ran the race because for her to be sending distress voice to somebody, the race made the girl for carry come up for that house. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you are the one that is putting someone in imminent danger. You not carry stabilizer. Self defense will not avail you. So I don't I don't understand. Who who advise you? Who is making you say all this rubbish that you are saying? And you are saying it with so much, so much effrontery, so much pride. Uh, I hit her head with stabilizer. Even if the court did not convict him because of his confessional statement, in short, if I'm the judge, if you are a judge, you don't need confessional statement. Let's leave the confessional statement alone. Let's leave it alone. Now look at the facts. Without the confessional statement, look at the facts. What are the facts? The fact is that he was the one that took the police to where they found her. Abby, that's the fact. Okay, if you took the police to where they found her, so how come she entered that grave, that shallow grave? How did she enter there? You now begin to probe. Okay, if you are the last person that saw her, can you give us a detailed explanation of what happened? And you, this is your explanation. Is this your explanation? Knowing fully well again that you fraudulently even lured her to this place. You fraudulently lured her here. And if you fraudulently lured her here, which according to you, you know, you just wanted to have sex with her, and then all of a sudden we are seeing that with no other evidence conflicting everything is straightforward everything is straightforward do you understand there was a fraudulent luring you carry that to your house you had sex with her you hit her head with a stabilizer you buried her in the shallow grave and then you took the police there in everything that we have said so far can you see any conflicting evidence anything that can even try to prove his innocence that he actually did not do it just try look let us let if you can please put it in the comment section i would like to hear your perspective what can you use to head in his defense that okay oh, this is doubt that he actually did it that oh is as if he didn't do it there was nothing remove his confessional statement nothing nothing everything followed the sequence and that sequence proves that he did it and that's the reason the court convicted him simple and straightforward that's the reason the court convicted him you understand so in everything that we've learned so far i'm very sure that we have learned a lot of things i told you that this video is going to be extremely interesting and very educative in everything that we have learned so far i think one of the very 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 important lessons for us please when you are arrested don't say pim to anybody don't give confessional statement all those things any statement at all don't give it because according to you, you are giving statement you don't know that it's confessional statement you are giving maybe it's not confessional as to why they arrested you you are confessing as to something else that it wasn't even part or something like that you see we have learned arrest in lieu we have learned when you are going somewhere please text your friend we have learned you a lot of things in relation to all these things please make sure that you share this video with your friends so that they can have knowledge uh, about things like this and also make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel I also want to know your perspective please put your perspective in the comment section below i would like to read every single thing that you say please make sure that you comment i would like to read your opinion about this and all that i will see you in my next show